Welcome to Link 2024. My name is Mahmoud Mirza. I am an engineer and a physician with Serenovis working in medical affairs. I'm joined with my colleague, Dr. Christian Ulfert, who came into medical affairs in Serenovis just one month ago from the University of Heidelberg as a practicing neurointerventionist. Welcome, Christian. Thank you, Mahmoud. So let's cut right to it, Christian. With all the aspiration catheters on the market, why do we need a new one? Well, because each of them has its strength and its weaknesses, and some are very trackable and they go right to where you want them, others are more stable. Um, all of them still have some problem in one or the other department. We have no catheters that do it all great, and we would really like to have a catheter that does it all great but I heard you did a systematic review on the problems we actually have. What did you learn? Yeah, we saw that as it was published in 2021, uh, nearly one in 23 thrombectomies uh, have a failure due to access problems. And they seem to be more often related to the carotid tortuosity than the arch. But we also saw that a lot of patients, up to 47% of them, seem to have some sort of challenging feature that prolongates the procedure or makes it more difficult to access. And they seem to be more related to the arch uh, rather than the carotid. So, you know, different anatomies need to be ac accounted for. Uh, so what features do you believe a new aspiration catheter needs to have in order to combat these problems? Well, in order to combat these problems, you need to have a perfect mixture of all the different ingredients. You need to have great trackability so you can get to where you want to get. You then need a lot of stability so the catheter stays where it was supposed to stay. And you need a catheter that is very versatile, that can do different things, be an access catheter, be a uh, thrombectomy catheter. I don't know, how, would, how did you go about to implement these features in your catheter? Yeah, there's no magical answer to this. It is a series of robust understanding and testing. You know, doing the review process, uh, figuring out at patient level which features and which types of carotid vasculature make it really, really tough, uh, and modeling them. So modeling not just one or two, but a variation of them. So that you come to a very kind of a robust mechanism to help you design a catheter that can overcome all of those challenges uh, and then to test them repeatedly with a variety of physicians. And that's how we were able to design the Seroglide 71. So what are the specifics about the Seroglide 71 in technical details? Well, the Seroglide 71 aspiration catheter is also an intermediate catheter with a 071 ID, 0825 inch OD, which is the smallest OD for this maximal ID of its kind. Uh, it has an end-to-end -end PTFE liner 55 centimeters of hydrophilic coating, and all these really help to make the catheter navigable with true coarse technology in the manufacturing process. And it also has angle cut polymers that allow for gradual transition of stiffness. So uh, Christian, we talked about the features and, the, and how they're designed, but how did it relate to your clinical experience? Well, in the cases I did, I could actually test many of the features we just talked about. We had cases where we just did snaking into the M1, showing great trackability. I did show a case in a basilary artery where I did balloon-mounted stenting and thrombectomy in the P2. Without the catheter moving an inch, so it is very stable. And we did stenting, stent retriever thrombectomy, aspiration. All the different techniques did work, so it's very versatile. Great. So I know that we've had more than 300 cases in EMEA. Uh, what were the feedback that we received from all the physicians that have used these devices in EMEA? Overall, about 87% were very happy and liked it equally as much or even better than their best-in-care catheter they used before. It showed very good um, results in trackability and reliability uh, during these procedures. Great. So. We have this new catheter that was designed based on these unmet needs that we discovered from the literature, from robust testing of the variation of different uh, anatomies that were modeled uh, that led to a design that could overcome those issues. And the clinical experience uh, seems to show quite positive results. And uh, so we're hoping that you're able to now test out the device. 
Thank you. Thank you.